Hello everybody, I'm Andy with Liminal Entertainment Technologies, and in this video I'm going to overview the Zoom OSC output system. These are the commands that Zoom OSC sends out into the world based on events that happen inside of Zoom, so that you can drag actions off of them, use the data for your own purposes and your other production tools. So we're going to use this video to overview how to get the identity of the person who did the action, as well as any additional information about what they did. And we're going to use sort of the case study of drawing a, a chat message on screen inside of Isadora just to give you a little bit of a sense of how it works. So let's get into it. So in order to use the output system of Zoom OSC, obviously Zoom OSC has to be participating in the call, um, but there are a couple other things that it needs to do as well. So we're going to go over to the, uh, the settings page here, and this is where the transmission IP and the transmission port become very important. Um, so the transmission IP is where the messages that Zoom OSC is sending into your network are going, and right now it's set to 127.0.0.1. This is localhost or the default software loopback, and this will allow outputs from Zoom OSC to go as inputs into other applications that are running on the same machine. And the transmission port is the port, just like the IP address, but this is the port that the same rules are going to apply to. So I'm going to set this to 1234 because we're going to be using Isadora today and that's the default for Isadora. Now over here on the right, there's this box that says subscribe to, and this is a drop-down list. And subscriptions inside of Zoom OSC are the different levels of reporting that we can do, and we do it based on groups of users. So you can use the targets that you set with target IDs, you can set it to everybody, which is what we're going to do today, but you can also send it to just um, panelists or people who have their video on, which we call the, the gallery participants. So by default, it's going to be set to none. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave it at all so that I can get the information from Zoom OSC uh, about any participant in the call who does anything. Uh, anything that we report on inside of our, our API document, which you can look at to see all the different outputs that we have from Zoom OSC. So uh, I'm going to hop into Isadora, and I'm just going to go ahead and create a new scene here. And the way that Isadora is organized is the communication tab and then the stream setup. You can see I've already been thinking about some of these things today, but I'll clear that out. What's nice about Isadora is that it has an auto-detect input, and this will basically draw on screen here in this box any input and the payloads that it receives uh, from any application that's sending to port 1234. So I'm going to go ahead and check that box. And then I'm going to do an event inside of Zoom. So I'm going to go into the Zoom call now and I'm going to trigger an event. I'm going to turn off a video feed. You'll see that we got four pieces of information here. Now gallery shape we're going to ignore for now. Gallery order is of note because these numbers here are the Zoom IDs of the participants in the order that they appear on screen. The gallery count is three. Three is the number of people with video on now. And then where it says video off, you'll notice that there's four values. And Isadora isn't showing us what those are right now. So I'm going to go ahead and assign a channel to that. I'm going to put that on channel 10. And this will allow me to go view it what the outputs of these are inside of, of the media server itself. So I'm going to put that on channel 10. I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to open up an OSC multi-listener. The OSC multi-listener allows me to display this information. I'm going to go ahead and render it as text. And I know that there were four messages there, so I'm going to have a base channel of 10, which is the thing that we just set, and then four for the number of options that are going to come in. I'm going to turn show address on. So you'll see here, right inside of Isadora, I can see that Zoom OSC video off, and then the additional channels here. Getting getting used to how Isadora displays its OSC uh, is a little bit of an acquired taste, but it does does eventually make sense once you get a chance to sort of play with it a bit. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and flutter the video on and then send it back off again to resend the packet. Okay, and now we can see what those four pieces of information are. The first one is a zero, then the second one is the username John, and then there's a negative one, and then there is a longer number. I'm going to tell you what these four things are. These are what we call the prefix, the user prefix. That This is sent with every user-based output inside of Zoom OSC. So anytime that we're reporting about something that a person does, we're giving you at minimum these four pieces of information. The first piece of information, the zero, is the target ID. So John is target ID zero. How do I know that? Well, if I, if I say, um, if I send a command, let's do a OSC multi-transmit. Let's send it to 9090, and let's just do slash zoom slash list. And then we'll look right on screen and see and confirm that this is in fact the correct user ID. So let's go over to the console. And if we look at the target participant data, user zero's username is John. That's correct. So that matches what we thought before. And then the username we know is John. This negative one here is the position of John inside of the gallery. But this is a video off command, so John does not have a position in the gallery anymore. So we set it to negative one. If, uh, if we did something like um, toggling an audio state, which we'll show you in a second, that gallery position will actually be correct based on the view. Um, and of course, there's some steps you have to follow on Windows on Mac. It's much more flexible, but 
but right now this is correct. There's, you know, John's not in the gallery, so the gallery index is negative one. And then finally, this is the zoom ID, which you can get through the same list that we were just on before. Looks like one, six, seven, eight, one, three, one, two. And yes, that is correct. One, six, seven, eight, one, three, one, two. So that is the zoom ID. So we're giving you all of that information every time an event happens. So this is really powerful. This allows you to basically have user specific responses to actions that happen in the zoom call. So for example, if you needed to feed this information into a transmit that basically says, look, when this, when this is fired, when we see this message come in, we want to request that John turn their video back on. Let's build that. So this will be slash zoom slash user name. Let's do that for now slash video on. And we basically we want to say, hey, John, you know, you're really important in this section. If you turn your video off, that's a problem. And we're going to request that it comes back on just to make it easy. So we're going to drag the text from this output in here. And this is going to associate the username. And now we just need something that can tell us um, that this event has, that something has changed here, that John has fired this off. And one of the things we're going to have to do is we're going to have to add an additional actor, just an OSC listener. This will give us an event when it, something is fired on a particular channel. So we'll put that on channel 10. Now I'm realizing that it'll be easier to see if we use Pat's video feed versus John's video feed because Pat is actually loaded on this computer directly. And uh, to do this, I'm going to um, go ahead and pull up an OSC listener actor. And then I'm going to add a trigger delay. And the reason for the trigger delay is so that we don't have a race condition between the value of the person coming from the multi-listener and the trigger value coming from the listener. So I'm going to hook it up like so. This way the value will get propagated into the OSC multi-transmit before the trigger to send that packet occurs. So I'm going to open up the local Zoom instance that is feeding the Pat video feed. And I'm going to turn its video on. Also, so far so good. And now you'll see when I turn video off, I will immediately get a request to turn my video back on. So here we go, stopping video. And boom, there's a request that Zoom OSC has sent us to start our video again. I can start that back up and I'm back. So this is just a little basic rule that we created inside of Isadora that'll keep asking our presenter to turn their video on if it turns off. Um, you can do the same thing with audio. And even with audio, you can get pre-approved consent to do that. Uh, if both ends are running Zoom OSC, they sort of automatically accept requests for this kind of thing. So there's a lot of things you can do here to, uh, to, to prompt your participant. Let's do one other example. One that's rather fun is to use the chat system. So with the chat system, you get not only the, the user prefix that we've talked about, but you actually get the contents of the chat message as an OSC payload. So let's go ahead and build an output for that. So this time I'm going to build it from scratch rather than auto detecting it. So I'm going to hit the, the new button and I'm going to put this on channel 20. And I'm, I know that the command by reading the document, the API is zoom OSC slash user slash chat. And so I'm going to hit okay on that. And then I'm going to open up a multi-listener, have it listen to channel 20. And this is going to take five outputs. It's going to have the four outputs that you were told uh, would be the user prefix. And then the fifth output is going to be the chat message itself. And then I'm just going to have this go into a text to draw actor. This is going to allow me to render this into a video feed. And then I'm going to hook up a projector to it. And then I'm going to force my stage preview here. So you can see it on screen. And right now it's just the, the asterisk that the text draw defaults to. But if I send a chat message, let's go ahead and do that inside of, send it on Pat's behalf here. So I'll send a chat message into the everybody channel. Resume OSC is able to see it. And I'm just going to say, hello world, enter. And now, as you can see, Isadora saw that. It propagated the value hello world into the projector. And you can do all sorts of things with this. This is the key to making really interesting escape room games, puzzle games, quizzes, trivia. Um, I've seen all sorts of things done with it. And it's also a really great way if you're looking to get the commentary from the audience into the stream, you could, you know, with some moderation, you could put this together and and you could have, uh, you know, a, a, a comment screener, just basically copy paste the comments and direct message them to the Zoom OSC instance so that you could say, you know, hi, Zoom participants. And boom, there it goes. Uh, so this could be a really great way to get that into a broadcast feed and, and do things like that. So um, a lot of flexibility with the outputs. Definitely encourage you to read up on them and see all the different things that we expose. But yeah, that's the that's the basics of it. You get those four actor prefix values, and then you get any additional payloads um, that you would request if you had a specific thing like a chat message that you want to get the text of. So play around with it, see what you can do, uh, and see how far you can use this information to be able to influence other applications or automate your broadcast, or really just do anything that you would need to help elevate your Zoom production. We'll catch you in the next one.